everyone, Cheryl back here. I am introducing a new series that we are doing for our YouTube channel called Video Diaries and Discussions. So I'm going to start them off by opening up a discussion with the One School Global Teachers and many of the emails that we get from them. I was given permission to read this email and I open it up to many of you who have reached out that if you wish to have your story told through this way, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to get to it. This is from a OSG teacher that was very recently there. What I can tell you is that racism, bullying and sexism are still very rampant in the system. There are also extreme behavior challenges within the student body as a result of a lack of a disciplinary process that staff can implement. Staff and campus principals have no real power at the school and students know this. They are very aware of the hierarchy that exists and the staff and CPs have to consult with higher ups to implement any disciplinary action. This results in staff being disrespected on the daily. Male staff are held in higher regard than female staff, even if the female staff have equal or higher credentials. This is evidenced by salary discrepancies. Staff have been discouraged to speak about contract salaries because of this. Students are more respectful towards male teachers. The only way female staff are respected is if they hold a higher position, district principal or higher. Students pick on teachers they don't like and eventually get them to quit or get fired. Students make statements to staff like, I can get you fired, and they have been able to on very many several occasions. They complain to their parents, parents complain to CAs and the regional management team, and poof, the staff is dismissed for whatever reason. If staff are too vocal, they can be let go, especially if it's questioning how the school is run. They've had several incredible teachers dismissed after they started questioning things about the school and community. It was unfortunate because the students really adored many of these teachers. They also do not hire anyone who has shown any support for the LGBTQ community. I was once part of a hiring committee and had chosen a candidate I felt was more than qualified for the role, but was told to advise a different candidate. My chosen candidate had been a part of the several LGBTQ movements listed on her resume, and I believe this to be the reason the community advised against her. Statements you have made in previous podcasts about putting staff in roles they're not qualified for are true. But of course, they are backtracking and in recent years have been making certain staff take the necessary qualification courses that apply to their roles. Example, principal courses. So that they will eventually be qualified to be in that position. It's heartbreaking to hear young, innocent students aspiring to be teachers or doctors, knowing they would never be. There are some incredibly bright females who call, could undoubtedly be brilliant doctors, but instead they would only amount to be secretaries for the male bosses, who, would, who used to be the students who would copy assignments from their smart female classmates. So much wasted intelligence and talent. By the time kids are in high school, they know they have a job lined up, so there's a huge drop in motivation to do any work or class or attend a class for many of them. So then the organization comes up with these initiatives to try to make it seem they can get higher qualifications. Initiatives include the tiered diploma program. There's bronze, silver, gold, platinum. Exhibition project, CAP, etc. They all end up just being more work for students and teachers. And the graduates end up with the jobs they were give, going to be given regardless of how high their OSG diploma was. One thing I do like, which they started in recent years, is give the students the ability to earn credits towards actual provincial diplomas, example, OSSD. And the ministry comes to do inspections to make sure classes are run according to ministry guidelines. If these students ever left the community, they'd have an actual shot at getting into college and university. So yes, the students graduate with two diplomas, the OSG one and the respectful provincial one. The lengths the community went through to monitor students and staff online activity and presence were ridiculous. Every device had Streamline 3, and many sites required for students to do research for schoolwork was blocked. Some teachers had to do the research for the students, print the information, and give it to the students, completely missing the point of developing research skills. There was also a program installed on every student device called Dino 
They said it was mostly for classroom management, but it is essentially a way to spy on what the kids were doing on their devices, as it takes screenshots of the students' monitors constantly. Teachers were discouraged to use their personal laptops and were constantly told to use the staff-designated devices. I know there are people in the community who are constantly rebelling and breaking rules. I hope one day they find the courage to actually leave because they clearly do not agree with the restraints put upon them. I used to have students request to come to my office for meetings, but it was mostly to share the rebellious acts with me. For example, they watch the hockey game the night before. They wear leggings and pants and love it. They ask if I watch a certain show or movie. They are curious about putting makeup on or just tell me how much they loved going to the keg for steak. They loved sharing these stories with me because they knew they couldn't share it with their peers because it was a risk. I never shared their stories with anyone other than their other staff, but I was very excited for these students to be able to experience normal, worldly things. So if you are an OSG teacher or someone on the campus and would like to share your experiences inside One School Global, please send them to info.getalife at proton.me and we can share them on our new video diaries and discussions. Take care, everyone.